1119. It's time for the Sunday Roundtable right now and making the needed adjustments for social distancing. We are joined by Democratic political analyst Marianne Marsh and Republican political analyst Rob Gray. Good to have you with us, guys. Good morning. Rob, Marianne, thank you for joining us. Um, you heard Congressman Clark this morning. As you listen to her talk about the House strategy, are we also mindful of how much airtime the president eats up every day? And I guess the bottom line is, can Democratic voices like hers be heard beyond Massachusetts? Well, I think that people aren't listening to Washington politicians. I think many of her criticisms are very legitimate about President Trump, but I think voters are looking to governors who are on the front lines less than they are Washington politicians. They just don't trust them at this point. Let's face it, this lack of pre preparedness. Uh, Trump is in the forefront now. He is definitely screwed up. But a lot of this uh, goes back to the Obama administration in terms of not having enough things stockpiled, not preparing enough for pandemics. So I think governors are the voice of reason here and who people trust. Marianne, I have a feeling you sort of agree with part of it, not all of it. Exactly. The voices in Washington people are listening to is Catherine Clark, Nancy Pelosi, and the House Democrats who are actually trying to help people and send money back to businesses and families so they can get by this. It's not the Republicans. It's not Donald Trump. They've blocked them out. That's why Donald Trump's numbers in the polls have dropped. Donald Trump is purposefully trying to block out stations like Channel 5 and others every night between five, you know, four, five, and six because people trust their local news. But the more they see of Donald Trump, the less they like him. And last but not least, I have to correct my friend Rob here. Uh, the fact is the Obama administration left plenty in the shelves for pandemics and other things. Donald Trump's been in office for over three years now, and he bought nothing, ended and canceled the pandemic plan, threw it out the window, and he now and Jared Kushner are personally deciding who gets supplies, who gets a respirator, who gets a ventilator, who gets what you need. That's not how any of this works, as Catherine Clark rightfully pointed out a few minutes ago. Well, don't get me wrong. I mean, Trump is to blame. His response Correct. has been inconsistent and ignorant, no question about it. But had this happened at the end of the Obama administration, uh, would we be that much better right now, off right now in this pandemic? I'm not so sure. It's one of those things that's tough to get your right. finger on. But Trump has is, Trump is done very badly, no question about it. Here's the difference. Your choice in this is Donald Trump is either incompetent or he's doing it intentionally. And he admits now at these press conferences, including yesterday, that he is intentionally deciding who gets what. He has purposely stolen supplies from Massachusetts at least twice, outbid them at least three times. That's not how any of this works. And the fact that Jared Kushner, if you've got his cell phone, you can get hooked up with a ventilator is deciding who lives and dies in this country should frighten let's, everybody. Uh, Rob, we're going to pick up on Marianne's point in just a minute, but let's talk about the, the Holyoke Soldiers Home here in Massachusetts. Mismanagement there is being investigated. The Baker administration wasn't told until after multiple deaths. But we'll, and, and I, don't, this is, I don't mean this question coldly and callously, but will Governor Baker suffer any political fallout from this? Well, I think a lot of people have put politics aside. They're looking for the governor to lead. I, I think he's doing a very good job, and I think his uh, success in trying to manage this crisis here on the state level uh, is going to exceed any uh, oversights that might have happened in terms of state facilities. So unfortunately, we're not at the peak yet. This is a terrible situation, but it's not a surprise that, that COVID is getting into all sorts of healthcare facilities. It's just gonna happen. I think that this will fade, uh, unfortunately, because there, there's so much more uh, heartache to come. It, uh, look, the, it's a state facility. It was founded in World War II. As someone from Western Mass and anyone who lives out there, you drive it south on Route 91, it sits up on a hill, and it's always been a source of pride. It is a tragedy and worse that veterans who served our country, veterans who served our country, survived wars, lost their lives at the hands of what is likely mismanagement. And it didn't have to be this way, just like this pandemic didn't have to be as bad as it is. He was smart to get an outside uh, person to investigate it. We'll see what the results are, but no matter what, it's a tragedy. We continue live on OTR. Just a minute.